In this tutorial in PhotoDirector 365, we're going to show you how you can do some very advanced and very impressive editing on text in PhotoDirector. You can make it look in a few seconds like what we have on the screen in this example. So what I'm going to do is move to the edit mode. We've already put sample in once. I'm going to delete it and we'll start from scratch. So you could too. I first start out with my text tool, which is the T on the icon list on the far right. I'll click on that and then I'll move over here and we'll enter our text in. We'll use the same word sample and we'll reposition it. And there we are. Now there's some nice things you can do with the basic editing tools you see on the right side of the screen, but we're going to use the enhanced tools in this tutorial and the next one. So to get there, I make sure that I'm on the layer, which is my text. Again, text comes in as a separate layer. It is not actually embedded in your photograph. And I'm going to click on the FX button on the right side in my layers list. This gives me some very powerful tools that I can use very simply to modify my text to make it look quite impressive. Let's take the first one, which is bevel and emboss. I'm going to activate that and then we'll open it. And here are my options. The blending mode for the highlights is screen and for the shadows is multiply. There's a lots of variations you can experiment with. We're just going to go with the defaults, but we have four bevel types inner, outer, emboss, and pillow emboss. Let's see how different they are. Let me show you how easy it is to make this look three-dimensional. I'm simply going to take the size slider and move it to the right. And immediately it makes some massive changes in terms of how the letters look. And they look much more punchy, much more three-dimensional. You can also enhance that by moving the depth slider and that gives it more shadows. And so the shadows increase. You can make it very dramatic or only slightly dramatic, but it really adds to that sense of depth on your lettering. And then there's a soften slider where you kind of soften the difference between the two. And a little of it works good. If you go all the way, it creates something I think is very hard to, to watch and read. You can change the light source as well. It starts out at 225 degrees on the compass. And I'll just slide around the compass here and you can see how the light source is changing. And so you can modify that to be exactly the kind of look you'd like. The direction can be up or down. We'll, we'll show you the difference here. There's down and then here is up. Let's look, that's inner bevel. That's the default. Let's look at the other three. The second is the outer bevel. And here again, this is quite a different look. And again, you want the, probably the depth on this and the size on this to go way, 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 way back. But it does give you a, a nice way to look at a different kind of bevel uh, that's not inside the letter, but outside the letter, letter. The third one is emboss. And emboss is a little bit like the second one. And you notice here's some ways in which you can modify it, both in terms of depth and in terms of size. Again, the size on these probably you want smaller. And the last one we have is called pillow emboss. My favorite, of course, is the inner bevel because I think it, it looks really good. And it's very simple to make some pretty impressive looking letters simply with that. For my money, this is one of the best features of this tool in PhotoDirector. Let's move beyond bevel and emboss and look at a couple of others in this tutorial. The second option you have is borders. It says border one and there's a reason why it has the number one. So we'll turn it on and the default text here happens to be white. Again, you can have outside, inside or center border. We'll talk about those and the blending mode. I'm going to leave it normal. Obviously, you can change the size of the border and the opacity of the border. You can change the fill type, either color or gradient. Now, right now we're on color and we can use our color picker to select the color. Uh, let's take something in blue and click on OK. We can also use a gradient. If I click on gradient, it opens a whole host of gradient styles. We're going to get to the gradients when we look at the face of the letters. It's the same set of controls and we're not going to go in depth on that right now for this one. but it's the same gradient, so we'll get to back to it later. What's That's the outside border. Let's look at the other border options. The second one is an inside border. 
And here it's inside the shape of the letters. And you can control the size. And actually, if you go too much, it actually overwrites everything we had in the other example, the bevel and emboss. And let's look at the third option. That's the center. I probably would use the, one of the first two most of the time in my editing. So we're going to turn the border back off. But that's what you can do with the border controls. The third option we have is inner shadow. Let's click on that and look at what we can do with an inner shadow. The inner shadow, in a sense, kind of makes the letter look hollowed out or deep. And you can change the opacity of that shadow. And the color as well. You can change the light source of the shadow and the distance of the shadow and a feature called the choke that seems to deal with something with the, the width on the surface of the letters. Then you can also control the size. I probably wouldn't use this one a lot but there, there might be some cases where it would give me the kind of look and feel I'd like on my letters. Now we all also have something besides inner shadow. We have something called inner glow. We're going to deal with that in this lesson and then we'll save the rest for next time. Inner glow again has a default blending mode. We won't mess with that. It also has an opacity. You can dial it back or dial it forward. And it has a feature called noise, which affects, I think, the, the clarity of it. Let's try a different color just to see what happens if we do. We'll take a, a blue. And here's our inner glow. We have softer and precise. When I click on precise, increase the size. We're actually getting a, a, a different kind of color perspective here as it blends the green and the blue. And the edge gives you a sharpness, a very clear sharpness when it comes to the two. So this is a really nice little tool. That's precise and edge. Let's try center. So you can experiment with mixing the outer glow and the inner glow and all the other features we've looked at so far. But it's highly customizable, very impressive by my way of thinking, what you can do with even the initial sets of tools available here in the effects. Now, if you want to save what you've done, and we've looked at the first four, we'll look at the other four in the, in the next one. You simply click on OK. It takes you back to your main screen in your photo director, and your sample is there in that layer track to use as you desire. In the next lesson, we're going to look at even more features in this tool.